Welcome along guys. Well it's another exciting day on one of the new 2020 Big Bruising Naked. This time we are riding, courtesy of Wheels Motorcycles, the amazing Kawasaki ZH2. 200 brake horsepower, supercharged engine, is more or less lifted exactly from the, uh, the original sports bike H2. This is going to be a first ride video of what this is like. I'm going to do a few videos on this bike. I'm going to do a comparison with the Super Duke, which I've got home at the moment as well. This on the road, but this video is going to be the first impressions video of the amazing Kawasaki ZH2. Roll the intro, Chopsy. Now, as a H2 owner, I've got an H2, for those that didn't know, this is a bike I'm really interested in because I know how the H2 performs, the sports bike version. I'm interested to see if they've changed anything on this engine. Have they dumbed it down at all? Is it making the same sort of power? Have they changed the power delivery? How does that engine work in a naked bike? It's enough chatter. Let's find out. Oh, stepping onto it. I have just rode here, which is about a mile from my house. It feels, it's big. You know, the, the H2 is not a particularly light motorcycle. It feels, you know, it's, it's a bit of substance to it. Let's put it that way. So pulling away on this, it's all very refined. It's all very smooth. It's quite wide between your legs. I mean, the, the H2 engine is a fairly wide engine. It's a straight four engine. So you've got a bit of girth. So you do have to spread your spread your legs a little bit but it's very comfortable very upright now i will do a comparison between this and the new super duke so i'm not going to talk about how it compares to the super duke in this video that's going to be a separate one but it's a it's a very relaxed riding position you know you're sat upright the bars are high the pegs are nice and low because the beauty of this bike is the actual bike is designed as a dedicated naked bike they've not compromised and just put took the fairing off the h2 and left everything that's all the ergos the same this is based on the z so this is based on the naked bike so it's, it's very much a naked from the off one thing with this bike obviously the real h2 is twenty six thousand pounds whatever it is so you know that this they, and they want to make this bike in line with the other naked you know they don't want to price it out the market so they've obviously done a bit of cost cutting on this compared to the h2 this doesn't have the single sided swinging arm that the h2 has this is a conventional double sided swinging arm you know it's some of the little niceties have been taken away but the basics are there the engine is there that supercharged thousand cc lump is in place big gas big gas Below sort of five grand, it sort of builds, maybe not as sharp as mine, lower down. Difficult to tell, but wait until we open up a little bit more. Quick shifter and blipper. Now, I don't know whether that's standard or not. I'll say all the full specs I'll tell you about when I do the proper review. I haven't done much reading up on this, so I don't know the full specs. All I can tell you for now is it's 200 horsepower. I think it could actually be the most powerful naked. I haven't seen a, a dyno comparison between this and the Ducati Street Fighter, which is claimed 200 horsepower as well, but I've seen them dyno about 180-ish. So it'd be interesting to see one of these on the dyno. I've not seen it yet. I don't know if they make more or less. Whether this is the most powerful naked bike money can buy. With a little bit of chipping, it certainly would be. Whoa! Whoa! Oh yeah! <laughs> That has got some go, and a lot of, I'm pleased to see it's got that little chirp. It's got that little chirp to the supercharger. That little chirping sound is the actual blades of the supercharger breaking the sound barrier. <laughs> well, that's quite cool. The problem is I've just got off of the, the new Super Duke, so that's got so much torque being a V-twin. This feels like it takes a little while to spin up, but once that boost comes in, my god that does fly <laughs> that absolutely flies oh that, that could be addictive it's got all of the electronics the imu they wouldn't put a 200 
horsepower engine in a bike without some decent electronics and this has got the full IMU so the six axis IMU to control pitch your you know all those directions because this 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 is a wheeling machine I could tell back there the wheel was coming up and it was killing it it's 200 horsepower for its sake it's gonna be a bit mental the brakes a Brembo's but they're not the Stylemas or the M50s they're the lesser Brembo caliper and it's got a Nissan master cylinder so I was a bit worried the brakes wouldn't be all that but you know they've got a nice feel to them they're quite progressive they're, they've got quite a nice initial bite to them I haven't really slammed on them yet but first impressions is the brakes have got quite a nice feel I mean you, you want good brakes on this bike I think this bike weighs about 235 kilos so it's quite heavy so you, and it's fast, so you're going to want some uh, brakes which work rather well. Right, let's see if we can dispatch with Mr. Mercedes. Oh yes, there's the chirpers. The suspension is the Showa Big Piston Forks, adjustable for preload and rebound by the look of it. Let's give it a little bit of test out, that suspension. Actually, you know, it's, it's a comfortable suspension, but there's nothing wrong with that. It handles much nicer than a 235 kilo naked has any right to. Yeah, the front brake, it's got loads of power, actually. The brake's got a really nice feel to it. Supercharger just chirping away to itself. The switch gear looks nice. You've, I can see you've got cruise control, different modes. I can think you could change all this on the dash here. We'll go into a bit more detail of all the functions and features of the dash. But I see you've got a little uh, display which shows the, the G factor and where the G's are on the bike. Fuel gauge. I've only got two blobs. That's quite annoying. I had half a tank when I left. And I think if you click on this. That one here is telling me well, that's how much brake pressure I'm applying. Click on it again and now it's how much boost pressure. That's what everyone wants to see, isn't it? Bloody boost gauge. All right, let's take it through my favorite little twisty section. It feels quite big on when you're going slowly. Oh. That pickup actually is <laughs> very nice. It feels a little bit heavy, a little bit wallowy. I you know, the suspension is set up, I think, to be sort of in the middle somewhere. Not just about performance, but comfort as well. But you know, it's not half bad. It's set up really rather well. It's got an initial little flat spot, a bit like my H2's got that as well, mid-range, in the middle around 6,000 it goes a little bit flat before it absolutely kicks this is a little bit similar to that but it's so it's silky smooth silky smooth it's not intimidating to ride like that you know if that feels very nice very smooth certainly not you know um, outrageous you could absolutely just cruise around on this without feeling the need to go bananas and make a lovely bike just to go out from a Sunday and just have a poodle. You can do the poodling, no problem on this. And I think once you get it past that six grand, that's when, thing, that's when it goes into warp drive. Power, 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 power! Oh yeah, wow, that gets you into uh, three figures rather quickly. Sorry, officer. Blipper. It's a look. It's like my H2 one because these have got the dog ring gearbox. It, 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 mine's getting better as as miles are going on my bike. The quick shifter and blipper is getting better, but this is like mine was. It's a little bit stiff. Whoa! Whoa! 
Yeah, it's fast. Jesus, it's fast. That picks up some serious speed and the wheel's just bopping along the road. But, oh, hello. It's blowing the camera over, that's for sure. Serious, serious amounts of grunt there. It's a very, very nice place to be, this. What I like about it, and I'm, I'm going to compare it a little bit to the Super Duty now, as I said I wasn't going to. I don't feel like I've just got to go mental on this. I feel like I can, oh look, bit of scenery to look at and enjoy. I'm not just thinking, oh I've got to go fast. It's not razor sharp. It's not razor sharp. It's, it's a bit soft, you know. It's a little bit flabby. <laughs> but in a good way. It's like myself, you know, a bit soft, a bit flabby, but it's got a bite to it. It's quite quiet. You'd, you'd have to do something with the exhaust. I can really barely hear it. Really barely. It needs to be louder. An exhaust on it. Bit of noise, bit of volume. Not too much. I don't, I'm not a massive fan of very noisy bikes, but I like to be able to hear what the engine's doing. You can't hear what the engine's doing. Hardly any vibrations. Incredibly smooth. A very smooth motorcycle. Very smooth. I love the dash. We'll go into more details about the dash and how it all works. I like this sort of matte black. It looks very nice. All the, fi all the fixtures and fittings look nice. I think they have cut some corners compared to the, the H2. I mean, obviously they have. This bike is around 15 grand, I think. Could be just under 15,000. I'll flash it up on the screen. But it's, it's at least 10,000 pound cheaper than the H2. So, you know, there's 10,000 pounds worth of cost cutting going on. Like I say, I will do a video back-to-back -back review against my H2 and this one. I'll take them both out and ride them both and we'll see the differences between them. Because they're, they're chalk and cheese. <laughs> they are chalk and cheese. I think the power delivery, it's, uh, it's not as wild. It's not as wild. It's obviously geared a bit differently. It's not putting out the same power as my H2. And that's before, I'm talking about before I've had it chipped standard. Let's try it again. Yeah, <laughs> you have got to hold on. Because of the position, that front wheel is dancing around. It, it can get a bit out of shape quite easily when it's off the ground. So, you know, because the back of the bike is compressing, because the suspension's quite soft, the front is coming up. The went anti wheelies keeping it down, but it's it's dancing around a little bit, and that that's slowing it down. I think, I think that's slowing the bike down because it's fighting the it's fighting with itself, fighting with its own anti wheelie. Oh, she's a beauty! Oh, I'm gonna spin it around. No, I'm not there. I'm not at someone's house. I spin around over here. The front brake. I'm really impressed with. Really impressed with the brakes. I'm worried that they may not be enough to haul this bike up but they're very nice it's very nice it is very nice indeed <laughs> addictive performance handling it's good handling it's not that's, you know, it's a compromise on these things. They haven't tried to make this a f really focused, tight, taut machine. No, the nakeds, are, no, really, nakeds are about being comfortable and, and cruising as well as going insanely fast. And I think they've sort of balanced that quite well with the suspension. You could have a little tweak in a twiddle with the with the twiddly bits, and you might be able to make it a little bit firmer, but. It, it's, it handles well, but not exceptionally, I would say. Just because it's a little bit wallowy, you know, if you need to change... Because it's a little bit wallowy, I think if you have to change direction mid-corner, it can get a little bit out of shape with itself. You know, I think really that this bike is really about the straight-line performance. I think people will buy this because it's insanely fast, you know. And also, if you then chip one of these, you're probably talking 250 brake horsepower, like the SX, like the real H2. 
you know it's got that potential there to be absolutely insane if this is anything like my age too as the revs increase the throttle bodies close to sort of 75 at 10,000 revs the throttle bodies are closed 75 percent tailing off that power if you get it chipped all they do is make those throttle bodies stay open and obviously they get the right amount of fuel in there to, as well but then that just unleashes the bike's proper potential because Kawasaki obviously doesn't feel comfortable releasing a 260 horsepower motorcycle on the market and I can't say I blame them let's pull over and see if I can work out how to play with the traction control levels power medium, oh you've got low medium or low medium or full power they go full obviously Kawasaki traction control off well we won't go with that yet three two one three two one was it three two one was it three two one three hang on three i can't do it three two one if you know what i'm talking about you're as old as me ktrc traction i think it's the kawasaki traction control so that's level one i'm going to try it on level one and then we'll see if that makes it more or less mental <laughs> apply we're applied oh kawasaki so there we go guys thanks very much for watching go and give wheels motorcycles from some love because they've dropped this down to me they're a channel sponsor it absolutely fantastic so i'll put website below check them out show them some love they may be doing a deal on this bike they've always got a deal on so it's really worth having a look at their website see what deal they've got this is their demo so also if you want to ride this give them a ring and take this out for a spin i will leave my little lcr res sock on there so the next person who gets a test ride can have that <laughs> but there we go thanks for watching guys i'll do another video on this a more in-depth video after what how i found it well i've lived with it a little bit longer not just jumped on it and given it some stick but uh, stick around stay tuned ride safe and i'll see you soon see you later guys this is power level one which is full power <laughs> I told you I was scared about that. Whoa! I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Whoa! <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> Listen to me. Never mind get beat up. Give me this any day of the week. <laughs> oh,